Well, the fraud scheme is typically referred to as an ATM cash out. So if you haven't changed your password or PIN code lately, experts say now would be a good time to do so. Automated teller machines potentially under attack across the world. The FBI is now warning American financial institutions about the possibility of cyber criminals carrying out a scheme using malware to access personal bank card information. Once they are into, into the system, they go to the administrative account and they remove any kind of limitation. So whatever in the bank at that time, they can just cash that one. And they do it at a predetermined time all over the world. Fraudulent copies of debit and credit cards are created by sending the stolen data to the masterminds, who then transfer it onto a reusable card with a magnetic stripe. The bank has to do a lot of things from their side to upgrade their, you know, their firewalls, to upgrade their policies of dealing with, uh, with you know, transactions. ATM cashouts are more likely to happen at small to medium-sized institutions around the world because they tend to have less security measures in place. But at Technology Credit Union in San Jose, officials are confident their systems are good to go. We have all IT uh, team and uh, most of the fraud team all hands on deck uh, over the weekend to be able to catch those uh, unusual events quickly and promptly. The FBI declined to go into greater detail about the warning, but said in a statement, the FBI routinely advises private industry of various cyber threat indicators observed during the course of our investigations. This data is provided in order to help systems administrators guard against the actions of persistent cyber criminals. Experts here at TechCU say it's important to monitor your online statements and to also use a two-step verification process whenever possible. And if you're using an ATM, be sure to be on the lookout for any skimming devices. This is a call for an uprising. Welcome to today's show. I wanted to cover this because it's so important to understand how they use fear to get people to go along with the agendas, how they create these ideas and these concepts to get people to where they want to get them, right? And it's more than just problem, reaction, solution. It's more than the Hegelian dialect. One of the things that people need to understand about the mark of the beast, because most of us sit back and we go, yeah, there's no way we're taking it. right. And there is no way, you know, I'm taking a microchip. And whether somebody wants to say, well, that's not the mark, or, uh, you know, you want to have that debate, you can have it somewhere else. That's my belief that, you know, transhumanism with the microchip is part of the mark of the beast. They're one, they go hand in hand. OK, but look at it from this perspective that we all think that, wow, how stupid can people be? People are going to take this. Right. So what they do is they start killing off Christianity. Right. They start making us look like fools and imbeciles. And, you know, they start showing people taking the microchip in their wrist and they go, hey, they're going to be healthy. Nothing's going to be wrong with them. Oh, look, you know, and all the celebrities are doing it. Oh, it's not really a big deal. They're not going to you know, suddenly combust and turn to fire. So people will go along with it. But this is the way that they're going to get people to do it. I've been saying this for years, okay? They're going to use fear tactics like this. This is how they're even going to convince Christians that it's the right thing. Sure, you'll have people coming out telling them that that's not really the mark of the beast, even though the Bible openly says you won't be able to buy and sell goods without having this in your wrist or your, or your forehead. But these FBI, even, you know, stories like this, right? The FBI warning everyone that banks worldwide are in serious threat mood right now of a massive, massive attack. Okay. This is what they do. They're going to create fake stories. And I'm not saying that people don't get hacked. I ironically, you know, somebody got access to my credit card a week or two ago and tried to, you know, just the number and tried to make a transaction in another state. It got blocked. I had to change my credit card. These things do happen, right? But they're going to create these stories on a mass level. Okay. Now there's, you know, we've all heard about Internet hackings and all that stuff. You know, my e Gmail has been hacked multiple times. But luckily enough, you know, you, you're able to work with these people, call them and, you know, get the, you know, get it, the password and the security changed. And, you know, you use a VPN and things like that. But I've been hacked numerous times. Okay, these things do happen. But this is on a global level where they're going to say, listen, there is a massive, massive attack. People are losing hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know. Hundreds of thousands of Americans have been hacked. Hundreds of thousands of Europeans have been hacked. They've lost all their money. They're broke. They're bankrupt. Hackers are getting out of control. Hackers, 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 right? They'll use repetition. They'll start beating the story in your head, just like this right here, because these stories come out every week. The FBI is warning of a potential ATM bank heist 
that could steal millions of dollars globally. And authorities now have good reason to believe the attack could be carried out within the coming days. This is a new story within the coming days, right? So think when you're thinking about this stuff and what they're trying to do, you have to put the fear aside and those things aside. You got to realize that, you know, someone like Bank of America and these things, you know, these big banks who are owned by these, you know, elite bloodlines, then the Rockefellers, Russia, all these people. Okay, they're not going to just go, okay, well, we're going to do this, you know, we're going to hack it, you know, and play along with it and have hundreds of thousands of people hacked. And then, you know, Bank of America suddenly go out of business and stuff like that. Now, it's essentially something like that could happen, but they want you to fear that happening. Right. And all they would have to do is create a huge story about it because you won't meet any of these people. Just like at these events, these hoax shooting events and stuff. Right. Nobody knows these people. Nobody meets these people. So they can come out with a story and say tonight on 60 Minutes, you know, one of the one of the hundreds of thousands of families that was hacked and now they're living in their car because the only possession they have left and their home is going to be, you know, taken away from them. They're getting evicted and all this stuff. There's foreclosure because all their money is now gone and they have all this debt and all this stuff. This is what keeps people in fear, right? And this goes for everybody because everybody has to think of how they could pay their next bill how they could pay their monthly rent or their monthly mortgage. It's unfortunately the way it is. They've set the world up this way. This isn't like when the disciples were here and you could just, you know, you can go town to town. You could set up a tent. You know, they own the land. They'll throw you off the land. You can't build your own house without, you know, the permits and the procedures and the taxes and the regulations and all that stuff. You can't even catch your own rain in a lot of states and use that rainwater, you know, as your source of water. Right. And we know why, obviously, because they want, you know, to they want to get the fluoride in it and everything else. But they want full control over all of us. OK, so this is how they can use these types of things, because they know money is something that everybody worries about. And then when they come out with this stuff, they go, listen, this hacking stuff has gotten so bad. The only thing that we can do to stop it from happening is take this microchip. Once this microchip is inside your body. Nobody can ever take your identity away, right? I mean, I guess realistically, if somebody like ties you down, cuts your wrists and takes the chip out or, you know, I mean, that's pretty, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure they'll probably have a story about that too. Or I should say, I'm sure it'll happen, but you'll never hear about it. In other words, but that's how they get people to go along with it. Big fear stories like this. So they come out and they're saying there's several steps you could take to protect your money. The fraud scheme is typically referred to as an ATM cash out. So if you haven't changed your password or pin lately, you know, change your pin. This is all preparation, right? Oh, I got to go change all my passwords. Oh, this is so frustrating. Oh, what's my password? I forget it. You're constantly changing this stuff. People are getting frustrated. It's the same with, you know, the security at the airport. They make it worse and worse and worse. Why do you think they make it worse and worse and worse? Because when you're chipped, they're going to, everything's going to be a okay. You're going to be able to get through the security checks faster because they know that there's no bombs in the plane and all this stuff that they always try to tell you and scare you with and hijackings. No, they want you to, the quick process is going to be to have the chip and have everything inside of you. Transhumanist. Okay. So they say, oh, the bank has to do a lot on their side to upgrade their firewalls, upgrade their policies. They're not doing that. This is according to the FBI. ATM cash outs are more likely to happen at small and medium sized institutions around the world because they tend to have less security measures in place. Fraudulent copies of debit and credit cards are created by sending the stolen data to the masterminds who then transfer it to a reusable card with a magnetic stripe. Right. I mean, you'd say that that sounds pretty ridiculous, you know, like, yeah, is that really plausible? I mean, you can make a fake credit card now and use it. Well, people will believe anything. And then people go, oh, my gosh, really? And so even when I cut up my credit card and throw it out, oh, yeah, you know, they can get piece it back together and still swipe it or buy stuff on the Internet. Oh, my gosh, how do we stop this stuff? It says, despite the threat to financial institutions globally, officials at Technology Credit Union in San Jose are confident the systems are good to go. That's only in here because it's a I'm reading it from an actual local story instead of the national stories because you actually get a little bit more information in the local stories, believe it or not. But they say we have all of the IT of their IT team and most of the fraud team, all hands on deck over the weekend, 
right? So, I mean, this is what they do, right? Over the, oh, it's going to happen in the next couple of days. And it doesn't end up happening. But they've constantly been preparing people for this with the Yahoo hacks. Like, look at the repetition in the stories in the, in the news. Yahoo emails hacked. Bank accounts hacked. Or they're going to be hacked. Oh, a big breach is coming. Oh, the FBI is warring people, right? So people are constantly, they have this fear that's getting stored in their head about their identity. You turn the radio on, almost every, if you listen to any radio station, whether it's AM, FM, you could be listening to Christian radio in your car. When the commercials come on, how many times do you hear something about identity theft? This is why. They're creating the fear of identity theft. Somebody could be pretending to be you. And I'm not saying that it doesn't occur. I'm not saying that there aren't people that do do this stuff and do hack stuff. A lot of the time it's through, you know, what do they call catfishing type emails where they ask, they say, hey, you know, uh, I need so-and-so and, I, you know, I'm a war veteran. Can you help me out? And people actually fall for like this kind of stuff, which is really pathetic. But they do things that way as well. But, you know, like I said, stuff like this does happen. There are hacks. There are ways that people can get your info. But look at it from the bigger picture. Because when you have the FBI saying that there's going to be hundreds of thousands of people hacked and all these emails are getting hacked and WikiLeaks and all this stuff, and you put it all in a big basket, you see what they're trying to do. They're trying to prepare people to want to accept the chip. Because for them, that's the end game. So don't fall for this stuff when you see it in the news. It's nothing but fear porn to get people to want to be on board with this stuff. Okay. And when one of these things does happen, it won't be the first, there'll be multiple, just like the shootings we see, right? Every couple weeks, big shooting, big shooting. Shooter ends up dead himself, right? Because they're just stories that they pump out there to continue to beat the repetition into your head that we have a problem when we need to do something about. It. So the problem reaction solution with this is the problem is people are getting hacked. The reaction is people are going hysteric and losing their money and all the things. And here comes the solution. A chip to put in your body. You never have to worry about being hacked. You never have to worry about identity theft. Things will be faster. You don't have to, you know, swipe your card. You can just hold your wrist up real fast at the grocery store or at the airport to get on the plane. And people will be all in and on board for it. And that's how mind control works. I thank you for listening to today's show. Don't fall for their deceptions. God bless you and your families.